Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Greg. This is Stephanie. This is our podcast, Living in Key West. We are both real estate agents here in the beautiful Florida Keys. So if you're looking to buy, sell, maybe even have your property managed, reach out to us. We would love to help you. Stephanie, Mm. I am passing it to you now. (laughs) Passing the baton. What's up? I want to note that you are rocking our merch, Living in Key West hat, Mm. and our Good Vibes sweatshirt. And I am rocking the Florida Keys SPCA hat that Tammy Fox gave us when she came on our podcast. So Yeah. It's actually a very soft and comfortable hat. It is. It's a very soft, comfortable hat. And I like the shirts they gave us, too. Yeah, me too. They have really nice, high-quality merch. So if you're into rescue animals and you want to support the Florida Keys SPCA, you can buy merch on their website. You can just make a donation on their website, too. But And if you want to support your local podcasters, (laughs) you can buy our merch. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Um, Merch galore. Yeah. Check out our merch. I'll I'll drop a little link for it. Yeah, we've got some Um, cute stuff. I know I you have. You've been working on some other. I have, but you've you poo pooed them all. So, <laughs> uh, so I well, uh, I haven't worked on. I, we got other stuff we're trying to do yeah, too. Yeah, Behind the scenes, can't but tell you. I think you're always percolating on new merch ideas. Yeah, so I am. Yeah, so that's one so guys buy our merch. <laughs> wah, wah, that's it. End of podcast. Thanks. See ya. Um, no, today. Uh, today is. Thank you, Jen, for letting us know about this. Aww. But uh, today is National Shizu Day. The best but in our ever. book, it's every day. Yes, it is every day. But yes. today is the actual holiday. I was like, this is better than Christmas. Like, yeah. I didn't even know that it existed, which is embarrassing. Weird. Yeah, you, you should know. be embarrassed. Yeah. I knew it existed. Yeah, you did? No. Oh. Yeah, so we're celebrating extra hard our sweet little yeah. babies today. They just got done truffle hunting. Oh, my God. Angels. Southernmost truffle hunters. Southernmost truffle hunters. TM. I, I, I had to text message our foster baby Shizu Mm -hmm. parents to say happy Shizu Day. Shizu Day, yeah. Yeah, Which, that's a lot. Yeah. Oh, God. (laughs) I'm still texting. (laughs) Yeah, it's the best day ever. Yeah. If you love Shih Tzus, you're in the right place. mm Mm-hmm. So this week has been as busy as usual, man. We're we're always busy. We are. A lot of it we don't want to say because, you know, secrets. But uh, (laughs) not really. We just don't want to. It's behind the scenes stuff for the real estate. Um, <laughs> so we don't give away everything that we're doing because then, you know, if you're real estate, you might take our ideas. Yeah, exactly. Secrets. Secrets. Yeah. So, uh, but it's, it has been a good week. It has been a good week. Um, we have family in town. Mm-hmm. So uh, we went and celebrated our niece's early birthday yesterday. So that was a lot of fun. That was fun. Um, and so that was yesterday they're down in kudjo mm-hmm. and uh yeah kids parties are always a lot f- a lot yeah <laughs> but fun but it was fun yeah so there was a competition there was games mm, i dominated you did dominate you kind of always I, I let my seven-year-old niece know she wasn't quite yeah there yet yeah. as far as the um Whatever. Which one was somehow it? she ended up going up against was me. Was it the pyramid one? She went up against was me it? in the pyramid and she went up against me in the M M&M, and M the M M&M and M one. The M M&M and M with a straw. Maybe. Oh, that's the one when she got really upset. She did get upset. Yeah. I freaking smoked her in that one. <laughs> 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 yeah, but it was it was fun. It was really cute. So yeah, we did do that. Wait, what I was trying to think of what else we did. It's the Hemingway like, Days going on. It is the Hemingway Days going did on. Did an open house, which was a good open house. That was fun. Um, I actually enjoy doing open houses. Uh, yeah, they so, can be fun and you meet new people and yeah. it's just like nice. We also started Pilates this week. Oh yeah. God, wait, that was this, this week. That's only been this week. Yes. We've only gone twice. <laughs> so we, what did, so what have you thought about Pilates? We started Pilates. Uh, I'll be honest. I was a little hesitant cause I'm a dude. Sure. And you know, Pilates is in my mind has always been like, that's a uh, a chick type of thing. Yeah, even though for it's not. you know it, it was actually founded by and developed by a man. So yeah. technically, but yes, I understand you what you're saying. Like it probably has like but the connotation. I of actually, being little... so I'm sure some of you have noticed. I don't have a lot of mobility in my neck and mm-hmm. uh, all that, and so I've actually enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It's making me use my body mm-hmm. while building up like your core strength. Mm-hmm. Um, we've only been twice. 
I like that the class is really small. There's yeah. only three of us. You yeah. can't you could truly probably only fit one more person. Yeah. It's a very um, small studio. But I like that. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to go in with uh a hundred other Mm-mm. people doing Mm-mm. Pilates. So it's it's kind of perfect. We get there are three of us. So we're in the beginners class. Uh I've liked it. Yeah. Um we'll see if we'll go I I'm gonna give it like a month mm-hmm. just to see if I can continue to like it and if it continues if i could tell a difference like in building up my core strength Mm -hmm. and uh like your posture my posture yeah uh which is kind of my mobility Mm -hmm. i don't know if i have you think i got more mobility oh my god don't hurt yourself i did i'm i'm down (laughs) cancel my pilates um but yeah i've I've enjoyed it yeah i i've thought it uh it's an hour long I'm not going to lie. My uh, flabs were in a lot of pain. Burning. Burning the yeah. flab. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. After that first first one. Yeah. It hurt. Yeah. And it's not, like, intense in the way of, like, like how CrossFit is intense, where it's, like, loud, and it's fast-paced, and it's, like, heavy weights, and, like, no, no, it's no, not no. like that, but it's very targeted and, like, deep work i think so like you are working like specific muscle groups and it's very and it's It's kind of toning you it is it's like yes yeah it's but it's not so intense that it's like oh like the next day you can't walk right or you're so sore it's like a good sore you know you got to work out but yeah it's not super intense so but so far so good so far so good yeah i would say it's it's kind of like yoga but more like intense in terms of like the workout of your Mm -hmm. muscles um, but same sort of vibes. Like you do focus on your breathing a yep. little bit, you know, it is like you're saying a smaller class. Mm-hmm. So like the, the, um, instructor will, um, you know, give you like little feedback, like, you know, get your knees up or do, yeah. you know, so it's sort of the same, in my opinion, the same vibe as like a yoga class, but like I said, like a little more intense. Yeah, so yeah. I really want to, and I, I can tell a difference. So I've, I have a really tight chest and shoulders and it kind of makes me go in like that. And I feel like just in these couple of days that we've been going, yes. I've kind of opened up. I, I told yeah. you to kind of keep an eye on yeah. it. Have you? Yeah. And well, I was just looking at you before you started to talk about that. And I could, I, like I can tell yeah. that your shoulders are back more. So, so I, I'm excited if it, if it works, if it helps me out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all for it. Absolutely. I'll pay it. It's not cheap, for but sure. I'll pay it. It's if a it, good if investment. It, it I mean, yeah, your body. Your so yes, yeah, so we did that. Temple. Your body is your temple, and you went fishing. I got that was this week yeah, too. That was on Tuesday. You went Wh- fishing Tuesday morning. What? Mm-hmm. Went fishing, caught some yellowtail, just a couple, not a lot. Um, it was a little choppy, not too rough, not too, but it was not flat calm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we were in by lunch. Perfect fishing trip. Yeah, that is a really nice fishing trip. And mini season's coming up this week. Mini season is next week, so that's on part of next week. So, guys, if you are in town uh, specifically for mini season and you never have uh, lobstered or done anything like that, or even if you have, make sure you know the rules. Yes, please. Uh, you know, make sure you measure your lobster. Make sure you make sure you get a license before you, you go. have your license. Make sure you do all that stuff. Make sure you follow the rules. The FWC makes it really easy to know what the rules are. So if you are confused, just go to their website, FWC, mm-hmm. and uh, play by the sh- rules. It's very serious. Yeah, it's you, extremely you get in a lot of serious. If you, if you truly, I just saw something earlier. Some some idiot was yeah. diving and already had lobster. Oh gosh! And I mean, it was some. You see it every once in a while, probably just the ones that get caught. But right. Um, don't do that. That's no. just stupid. No, it's not uh, but worth But follow it. the rules and have a good time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to think of what else. That's what's going on next week. That is what's going on. Well, yeah, and I was looking at the calendar of events. There's not really much coming up for calendar of events. Mm, for probably this because week. of mini season. Probably because of mini season. Yeah. I um, might miss my Pilates on Wednesday unless maybe. we can get it moved to Monday. I, would I haven't that. heard from her, so I'm know. guessing probably not. But yeah. Yeah. Well, something's telling me we might have to. Well, it's a little late now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I think maybe let's take like a few minutes and just talk about lobstering. I know you kind of just like okay. said, and we've. I think we've talked about it before, but for anyone who has not been diving for lobster, yep. um, or just has no idea what we're talking about at all, mm-hmm. um, let's talk about it and kind of give a description because it's one of those things that like. 
it's like if you know you know and if you don't it's literally not on your radar for at all like completely there yeah. you don't have any sense of it so down here in the florida keys it's spiny lobster so yep. our lobster do not have claws like maine lobster and you eat pinchers the, <laughs> you eat the um meat out of the tail yep and so um so they're found in like potholes in the bottom of the ocean and you can go scuba diving for them in like the deeper ocean and i think that's where you find like the bigger ones right typically is like you'll find well, if you go out further off of like and off of like a little further north, north yes you can find some you can find some big ones yeah, up, yeah. up further north uh down here in the keys so uh, don't quote me on this because you have a measuring stick and that's what i have yeah. but i think it's three inches for the for the head part um so the head's got to be three inches so that's you, what measure you measure from like between the eyes yep. down so the, the lobster's the like the, the head. it's like two kind of like portions yeah. kind of or, or like parts so you've got like the head part and then you've got the tail part so the head part is what you measure to decide or determine if it's legal so you measure from like between the eyes and then it goes back to where basically the tail starts what are you doing when when you just snuck in hey when he always girl. walks in and she's always had her head down because she's part bloodhound <laughs> and so she was sniffing and then she looked up and saw the um microphone wire hanging down <laughs> scared and like scared <laughs> So she anyways, said it's Shih Tzu Day. I yeah, will interrupt yeah, if I, do I want, what I want to. Now she's getting comfortable on a pillow. She's like every day Shih Tzu Day. Anyway, so that's how you measure to determine if yeah. it's legal. I um, think it's three inches. Once again, that sounds I, they, right. They have measuring yeah. sticks, so you just you get one need of those. To have your measuring stick. Yes. Don't try to like. Don't take a measuring tape with you. No. Go stop at the bait <laughs> shop and get because it's like a. It's almost like a little like it has notches, and so like you can yeah. put it down on there and yeah it's it's just don't mess with it yep. um so, so there's, there's potholes but also if you go ocean side you can get them off of like uh there's some like shelves yeah like coral like heads that. sometimes um and you normally dive in like what eight feet or shallower yep for us for, for you. people who go obviously a lot deeper right um but we snorkel we don't use tanks right um and yeah there are a lot of them here on when we go gulf side is uh potholes are like bigger potholes sometimes you'll see some of the ledges and mm -hmm. and, and shelves and stuff but so uh, you're just yeah typically you're you're snorkeling along mm -hmm. and and actually greg you've been doing this pretty much your whole life yep. i mean since you were like what five yeah. six and you have eagle eyes so greg is great sure. at standing at the front of the boat and you have a marker that like floats and it has it has rope on it and it'll unravel itself and greg can spot from the boat even in not great conditions he can spot with incredible precision and accuracy lobster holes a lot of people most people really can't and not to the level that greg does so a lot of people will just drag behind the boat with their mask on so then they can actually put their eyes under the water and see mm -hmm. where there's a hole but yeah, you'll mark if, the if hole. conditions are bad you kind of gotta do that yes, i mean yes. if the wind's blowing and it's like ripply. no matter how good you are at right. spotting at spotting holes you sometimes you because they start looking you know you everything's a shadow and you start seeing yeah. stuff like that and it all yeah. kind of looks like a lobster head so sometimes you have to drag behind the boat or snorkel hole. around see if you can find a hole but most of the time you're able to spot them from the boat you throw a little marker out and then everyone jumps in yeah and then you have your net yep and, and then you have stick. a tickle stick which is just a long metal rod yeah. essentially that has like a little kink at the end of it yep. like almost like a little l at the end of it yep it's nothing fancy no it's just a long metal pole mm -hmm. essentially probably I don't know what four feet maybe yeah, something like that feet. and so you go down and you see if you see antennas typically is what you're looking for mm -hmm. right do you have yeah. something else that you're looking for or do you no i mean if, if you're if you're towing down the boat a lot of times you'll look for fish mm -hmm. like so if you not just any type of fish so if you see some uh mangrove or gray snapper maybe you would say okay there's probably a lobster hole nearby if you see uh the I think it's a pork fish, which is the yellow and black fish. Mm. If you see that, if you see that fish, typically there's a hole nearby. Angel fish, something like that. There's there's going to be a hole nearby. And sometimes you'll like follow the fish. Yeah, if yeah, there's fish like that, those. you follow them and they'll lead you to a yeah. hole also. Yeah. Yep. So if you see those and you're towing behind the boat, you can drop off and follow the fish. Um, and, and hopefully you'll come across a hole. But then you, you once you get to the hole and you see the hole, um, that's when you... If you see lobster antennas, then obviously there's some lobster down there. Sometimes a lobster, you got to go down and look in the hole. The lobster can be back there. Um, Sometimes they're 
just close sometimes it's a little pothole and there'll be like some they'll be like a little bit just stacked one, up. well sometimes so you'll see just, a pothole and there's just literally yeah. just one there yeah um sometimes you'll see him walking across the mm -hmm. grass just like unassuming yeah. just out for a stroll yeah <laughs> they didn't get the memo it was mini season <laughs> <Whoops>. <laughs> oh shoot <laughs> um so yeah so i mean you'll go down there and and you what you do is you you need to tickle them out right with the tickle stick but they move in a really interesting way they shoot backwards they shoot back they kind of like you snap out, their tail yeah and it'll like shoot them backwards so, so they you don't need go to put forward. the net behind them you put it behind them right and then you tickle them out which tickle, is yeah just really putting the rod in there and kind of like moving around yeah. see if you can kind of like get them to get freaked yeah. out and kind of typically if you do it right you can get them to just go like right into your net yeah it's not as easy as that no, sounds it's, but yeah. it, it, it's challenging because you have, you also have to think about you're snorkeling so you're you're holding your breath you're kicking down you're holding your breath you're trying to get at the correct angle there's current there's current yes and then you have to get your net at the right place and then you have to you know tickle them out and then you'll get them in the net and take them up to the boat and then the boat will typically no you measure in the water oh you measure in the water yeah and then, that's what you're supposed to do okay measure in the water and then they double check you once you put yep. it up on the boat and they put it in the live well or whatever yeah and then what are the limits it's six a person per six day Six a person per day yeah. here in the florida keys here in the keys right yeah so right. the limits and, and, are and, different is and, it by county in key west is it by county yeah, where it's different i don't know there oh okay no key west. well that's all we know that's all we know is but six per person per day out, off of like when we've done a marathon yeah Kudjo, yeah, Kujo, whatever. Yeah, and double check everything on yeah, the FWC yeah. and all that stuff. You definitely want to go to the FWC site and, and double check. Yeah, um, six per person per day, mm -hmm. and uh, that is plenty. Oh my god, you plenty. Uh, plenty. Yeah, so but it's fun. I've mm -hmm. been doing it my whole life. Yeah, enjoy it. Yeah, um, also spearing fish mm -hmm. if they're there. Mm -hmm. I have heard. I have not been in the water, but I have heard that it's really murky. Yeah, which is weird and because not many where we go. It's yeah, where we go, it's been like mm -hmm. it's typically very clear, yeah. Um, but I've heard that it is like unbelievably yeah. murky, yeah, so like creepy murky, yeah. So we'll see, yeah, Might not get anything, yeah. Half the fun is being out there yeah. on the hunt, you know, you yeah. go out very I mean, early, out super early, yeah, and then uh stay out for a while but i gotta be back because of the ambassador's yeah. program but yeah so you won't be out all day this time um but yeah i mean i think it's it's something fun to do and it's an experience certainly and if you have the opportunity to do it at least once mm -hmm. i mean it's something fun to just like yeah. have the experience and, and go do it so. no it's cool it's it's a it's a good experience um we went out off of marathon for the longest time and then recently we started coming up here mm -hmm. and going off of the lower keys because mm -hmm. uh, marathon was there's no lobster there's freaking no yeah. lobster man yeah um at least golf side yeah so yeah um so yeah and we we like lobster um but we don't love lobster like for eating it yeah we're not like a lot of people really really but really I'll love danged you oh, make my a, lobster rolls your lobster rolls and the fried lobster well, and also I think my um, lobster bisque is really and good your too. Lobster, yeah. Okay, so we we we're gonna change that. We like lobster now. <laughs> we like it, and we have certain recipes that we like it, but it's not. It's it's actually kind of interesting because if you are used to Maine lobster, Florida lobster is totally different. It's like tougher. It's like a little more. So mm -hmm. like you kind of I think prepare it differently. So to me. I like it best when it's like cut into smaller chunks. Yep. So we make Makes it, it easier to eat. We put it, we make it smaller when it goes in the bisque. I always cut it and make it smaller for like our lobster rolls that are really good. Mm. And then the fried lobster, we always cut it into smaller yeah. pieces. So I think the preparation also really helps. But yeah, I mean, it's good depending on how you prepare it. But I, yeah. I also, so that's a lot of fun. That's so you got yeah. mini season, which is the last Wednesday and Thursday of July. So it's M I N I season, mini, yes. not mini. Yeah, mini. Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm saying that because when I first like heard mini season, I I think like I was like, is it mini? Like it's a small season, or is it like I didn't yeah. know? So, so I, was, I wasn't saying you were saying it wrong. mini season. Mini season is the last Wednesday and Thursday of July. So that's coming up this yeah. week. Uh, coming up week Wednesday and Thursday. So you have just those two days mm -hmm. to lobster. Then you have regular season that starts once again. I'm not sure of the exact date. I think it's August 6th or 7th mm -hmm. or 8th or something like that. And then that goes for a period of time 
for regular season. Mm-hmm. So, um, so mini season is a big deal because it's the first opportunity for people to dive yeah. for lobster in what uh, several months because mm-hmm. it's they've been off season and for a lot of people a year, uh, right? Yes, because most people will come down yes. for mini season. Yeah. That's the only time they dive for lobster. Yes, yeah. So it's a big um, deal. Yeah, and you know, a lot of times the first day you do well, and the second day. Slim picking. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, so, because people get out there and hit it. It's like, yeah, it gets and picked where we over. go, man, it's like, it looks like it's a boat parade. It does. <laughs> so, uh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So that's coming up. So that's fun. I also want to point out, man, today, if today hasn't been like, a, like you live in the Keys mm-hmm. day, oh, yeah. I mean, we've been taking a little easy. We've been also working, but we've been taking a little easy. Um, but, we went to One Love for lunch for yeah. lunch because mm-hmm. we were hungry. Yeah. We're like, hey, we got to eat. Yeah. Let's go to One Love. And then we're also out of coffee. So this kind of played a role with why we went to One Love also because it's kind of on the way. We then went to Babies and got our coffee. Yeah. Babies is right there at, in the Lower Sugar Loaf. Yeah. Um, that's our favorite coffee. It is our favorite coffee. Um, at least uh, I'm not going to drive to Babies just to get like a cup of coffee. No. Because um, there's... There's a ton in, in Key West, but I like their uh, like coffee ground. Yes, the their best. drip coffee. Because we've yeah. gotten some other ones. There's different um, coffee that we like here in Key West. Like if we just want yeah. like a latte or something, like we'll just go somewhere in Key West. But we've gotten coffee grounds from different places here in Key West, and we haven't liked them anywhere near as m- much as we like the coffee grounds from Babies. Well, and truthfully, this doesn't factor in it too much, but Babies, like... The price for the amount you get, yeah. I think, is the best. Yeah, absolutely. Like, better than public, better than any yeah. of the other ones on the island. So, yeah. like... Yeah, we just go and stock up, and yeah. then, you know... We usually get a couple bags, and yeah. that lasts us for a couple weeks. Yeah, so. and then we go and back then up. then gives us a reason to yeah. leave Key West. <laughs> so... Exactly. Uh, yeah, so there you go. You guys are caught up on lobster season. Yeah. Um, drop any questions you have. And I know like we'll post on our, if you don't follow us on Instagram, yep. follow us on Instagram because um, that's where we post like during the day. So I'm sure you'll take pictures and videos and stuff while you're mm-hmm. on the boat for I'll try to first probably day. do a live. Oh yeah. That'd be cool. Um, when we're in the morning, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So on TikTok. Yeah. So that's that. Mm-hmm. Would you like to do? Ha- oh, we need uh, a we need. house of the week yes i would so we have two and neither is in key west this week we i didn't i didn't find one that i that i wanted to do a house of the week so i usually try to do one that has literally come up this week and i didn't find any from key west so i mean if you're really looking for a place check out 1023 simonton (laughs) that one is fantastic it is it's in uh old town key west Yep, a block from duval yeah two bedroom three full bath beautifully staged unbeautifully (laughs) <laughs> Unbelievably, <laughs> unbelievably, yes, stayed. So, anyways, both of these houses are in Cudjo. They both popped up this week. I like both of them. Yes. Um, do you want to start with the more expensive or less expensive? Let's uh, just drop the hammer. Okay, more expensive. Um, so this place is seven eighty three Pattison P A T T I S O N Drive. It's only been on the market for two days, so it is a brand new listing, and it's gorgeous. It is. Also known as Marlin Estate. Ooh la la. Yeah. Talk about fancy. It's in Cudjo Gardens. So this place is like 20-ish minutes away from Key West. So you're still very, very close, but you're in the beautiful Lower Keys. It is certainly like a luxury type property too. It's one of those where like there really doesn't seem to have been any expense spared. The pool's stunning. It is. And like your view is like, you're like kind of on one of the corner lots. Gorgeous. So it's uh three million six hundred and ninety five thousand. It is it was built in nineteen eighty, but it's been very recently completely updated, redone, completely yeah. redone. It's uh two thousand three hundred and eighty eight square feet, and it is a three bed, three bath. So there's actually two uh, primary suites with mm, their own ensuite bathroom, fancy. and then there's a third bedroom and bathroom, which is really nice. And then it also says that there's um, like a private lounging, two pri- private lounging areas, one of which you could potentially convert into like a fourth bedroom if you wanted to do that. <laughs> it's a major lounge area. I know, seriously. Um, so also there is. I turn um, it into a Pilates studio. There you go. 
Pure lattes. Pure lattes. Pure lattes. <laughs> um, so you have dockage on both sides of the basin, and you have 118 feet of protected concrete dockage. And you also have a 17,000 pound boat lift. Um, so yeah, everything you could want outside. Then the kitchen is all top of the line, stainless steel, commercial grade appliances. It really is like gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And then it's really beautifully um, landscaped outside as well. The pool is insane. It is a legitimate uh, infinity pool. Yeah. You no know, faking, no non infinity pool. Not a non infinity pool, pool. It's really. If you know, you know. Yeah. The, the views truly are gorgeous. They're stunning. And it's got like a wall of glass doors mm -hmm. in the back. So even when you're inside, you're looking out over your infinity pool. You're looking out I'd over the ocean. Like a storm just rolls through. Oh my through, gosh. Which, yes. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's really beautifully staged. This is a beautiful home, really. Yep. So yeah, if you're looking for a luxury estate in Kajo Key for the low, low price of three million six hundred ninety-five thousand, that's not bad. It's really not. It's so like, what's the what's the control depth? Three feet? Mm, four. Four feet. Four feet. Yes. <sighs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. You could bring your invincible or your oh, Freeman. Oh, for sure. Uh, so just hit us up if you want that property. We'd love to help you out. We could even become fishing buddies. There you go. Um, Bonus. Especially if you got that Freeman. You got that 42 Freeman or 44, <laughs> whatever they are. Let me know. Or one of the Invincibles. Those and it also nice. mentions Kudja Marina is two blocks away. So for like boating needs, mm. it's right there. And they also have a new bent prop restaurant within walking distance, which is nice. So like if it's yummy, you can just walk to dinner or whatever, which is kind of a nice little bonus. Yeah. Find your square grouper and all that too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So okay. there you cool. go. Yeah. So Next. That, all right. House so of the week number two. <laughs> yes. So this one is 22684 Jolly Roger Drive. And again, this one's in Cudjo. This place has only been on the market for five days. So just a few days longer than the other one, but still a very new listing. It is $2,750,000, a little over 1,600 square feet, and it is a three-bedroom, two-bath. Control depth of three feet. Ah. Yeah. So this place has been updated. It was built in 1977, but it's very nice inside. Okay. Um, completely renovated in 2020 with high-quality luxury finishes, immaculate condition throughout, very private backyard with heated saltwater swimming pool and hot Ooh, shower, nice. which is very nice. Oversized Ooh, hot lot. Hot is nice. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, oversized lot, uh, which can accommodate an RV and boat parking and room for a potential building addition, which is really interesting. If you wanted to put like something like a workshop, that would yeah. be really cool or mm -hmm. like a little guest quarters or something. Um, so you also have a fire pit, which is really beautiful and faces the ocean. So imagine just like sitting outside, looking at the ocean, watching a storm roll in, mm -hmm. having a fire, like beautiful outdoor living space. There is also a covered patio, a Sonos sound system inside and out. So you can enjoy your music no matter where you are. And there's a dock with water and electric electric for up to a 30 foot boat with direct ocean access. There's also an attached covered carport and it'll accommodate four cars. Wow. Yep. So you're cool. buying it fully furnished and you're right around the corner, like you said, from Square Grouper. Great um, location. Yeah. So super. You're right there on the water. Beautiful views. Absolutely. Nice pool. And this is a really popular area for rentals as well. Mm -hmm. So if you did want to buy something and thought you might want to try to offset some of your costs or, yeah. you know, whatever. This or is, you just wonder it out because you can only come here for a couple months a year. Absolutely. Yeah. This or is not. A, up to you. Absolutely. This is a, this is definitely like a popular mm -hmm. lower keys area for, yep. for that. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's there that. There you go. Two beautiful houses. Two beautiful houses. Two beautiful house of the weeks. House of the weeks. Yes. There's a, house this place A's. has a ton of storage space underneath. It's a very large lot. Like it was saying, like plenty of space for you or for renters to like have their boat, have their car, have their, you know, all that. All right. All right. Okay. So how much time have we... Mm, we're getting pretty close to wanting to wrap up. Okay, so I was gonna just do like a couple of little fun like facts. fun facts about Ernest Hemingway since it's Hemingway Days. We actually yeah. ran into a guy this morning when we were walking at like seven, 
And he went to go, he went walking by and I was like, did you compete in the Hemingway lookalike contest? And he's like, yeah, I did. But he didn't win, but he was really sweet. But it was funny because you'll see all these guys yeah. on the island that look like Hemingway during Hemingway days. So yeah. So, okay. So there's several facts here. So I'll just pick out some really interesting ones that you may or may not know. So um, Hemingway survived two back-to-back claims plane crashes one day apart. So when he was vacationing in the Belgian Congo, um, Hemingway and his fourth wife, Mary, were injured when their flight was forced into a crash landing. And then the following day, they boarded another plane for medical treatment and the aircraft exploded at takeoff. Oh my goodness. Leaving the author gravely wounded. Isn't that wild? Um, when he finally reached, I think it's Entebbe? <laughs> a hospital. Entebbe? Wherever they were headed, journalists had already reported his death, so he also got to read his own obituary. Ooh. Yeah. Um, so Hemingway's global travels inspired much of his writing, including Green Hills of Africa, a book by his niece, Hilary Hemingway Chronicles, outrageous stories from her father, Less about traveling the world and hunting with Hemingway. So I thought that was sort of like yeah. an interesting. Um, he dedicated a book to each of his four wives. So he was married four times. And also something that I thought was really interesting was he moved on very quickly. So he was always remarried within a year of his wow. previous divorce. So hmm. yeah. I should tell you a little something about him. Yeah. Um, he set a world record for fishing in 1938 when he caught seven marlins in one day. That That's sounds pretty, exhausting. That sounds wildly exhausting and think about back then with their rod and reels right (laughs) yes seven and one day um he rewrote the last page of a farewell to arms about his experience in world war one 39 times so he had 39 different endings to a farewell to arms before he finally settled on the one that he he wanted yes um and you guys probably know this one, and I've done a video about it, but it's kind of a funny, I don't know, tale about him. So he decorated his house with a urinal from his favorite bar. So um, he, it says, when his favorite local watering hole underwent renovations, Hemingway claimed one of the urinals, converting it into a fountain in his home. It's still in the outdoor space there in the yard. Um, the cats actually drink out of it. It's like a big cat, like watering hole, basically. Um, he quipped that he'd, this is a very famous quote that he poured enough money into it to make it his. So um, he wrote several of his most iconic books, including to have and have not from the residents here in Key West um, that, you know, is the Hemingway house where the urinal is that you can mm. see in the gardens. That's cool. So yeah, very funny. Yeah. He was an interesting guy. I think there's a lot of lore and legend surrounding him. I think he was also probably quite problematic and, you know, a lot of different ways. So I think like every human, probably, uh, I think a very complicated person. I think a lot of the lore surrounding him, and I'm actually really interested to uh, do some research on this myself because I, I've, I've seen a little bit about this, but I haven't done enough about it to speak about it really eloquently. But I think a lot of the lore surrounding Hemingway was Hemingway created. Probably. I think it was like he was a legend in his own mind. He just, so he'd spread a rumor. Yeah, basically. I caught a Twenty-seven Marlin yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, did you hear it? And it finally dwindled down to he only caught eight. But yeah, yeah, uh, or and, seven. And I think sometimes, like when you read things about him, like if you read the facts about it, and then you see there's like a little bit of a spin, right? So it's almost like I think we can all think of those things, and I don't want to say the one that I'm thinking of, but like where people just start saying it, and then people don't think about what's being said. They just continue to sort of like perpetuate they the myth. It, yeah. And so it's like, I feel like sometimes that some of the myth around him and some of the spin around some of the things that are were probably problematic or actually like not good things, but they kind of have this positive spin. It's because like the, the lore around him is that yeah. he was this like, you know, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. So anyways, I think he was a complicated guy, but interesting. Yeah. Oh my, bless you. Excuse me. Yeah. So. Very cool. Those are the facts. Is that it? I think that's it. All right. Well, thank you guys for uh, hopefully watching till the end. We yeah. appreciate it. Remember, if you want any real estate down here in the Florida Keys, go ahead and reach out to us. Yeah. Other than that, we'll see you later. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.